Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a fillable form in Microsoft Word. We're going to use content controls to achieve this, so you're not going to have to print the form out to fill it in. You can do it all on screen. There are different types of content controls you can use in your form. Up here, I've got a date content control that just allows me to select a date. Here, I've got a drop down list of agent names. Down here in the notes area, I can actually select a whole paragraph to appear in this part of the form. This is great if you know that there are certain paragraphs you're always going to use within this form. Further down the form, you can see I've got these check boxes that you can tick or untick. You can also have a content control that allows you to display a photo. Now, once we've set up the form, we are going to protect it so that users can't edit anything except the content controls. So they won't be able to change the structure or the format of your form. They'll only be able to enter data into these controls. Okay, let's see how we can create this form. Now the actual structure of the form, I'm not going to cover. This is basically a table and you can insert tables very easily by going to the insert tab on your ribbon and then using this table button. If you don't know how to create tables, then that's really a subject for another video. So once you've got your table set up, you've got the layout just as you want it, the next step is to display the developer tab on your ribbon. Now that developer tab doesn't appear there by default. So what you need to do is right click on one of the other tabs and then go to customize the ribbon. Down here on the right hand side, you'll see the option for developer. By default, it will be unticked. So just tick it and then click on OK. If you then click on the Developer tab, part of the ribbon that you're interested in is this Controls group. And here are all the content controls that you can use in your form. If you hover over them, it'll tell you exactly what they are. So we've got like a plain text control here, a picture content control here, a drop down list content control. So everything we need to create our form. Now we're going to start off with a very basic text content control and we'll do this for the client name. So the first step is to click into the cell where you want the content control to appear. Then you go up to the content control button that you want to insert. We're going to insert a plain text content control. So I click on that button. There's my content control in the form. Next step would be to click on the properties button. I'm going to give the content control a title. This title will appear in the form. I'm going to call this client name. You can change the color of the content control. Let's just see what that looks like. So you can see that color has been applied and the title appears there just above where the user will enter a value. Now if I type my name into that content control, so you wanted the values that the user enters to appear in a certain way. All you can do is set up a style for your form entries. To do that, let's go back to the properties button. And there's an option here, use a style to format text typed into the empty control. So I'm going to tick that and then create a new style. I'm going to call this form entry. Choose a font, a font size, and a color. Click on OK. Click on OK. And you can see that that style has now been applied to that control. And we can use that style for the other controls that we're going to create within this form. Let's create the drop down list for the agent names. So I click in the cell that I want the control to appear in. I'm going to go for the drop down list content control. There is another one that's similar called Combo Box Content Control. This one gives you a drop down list but also allows you to type in new values, whereas the drop down one doesn't. It restricts you to what's in the drop down list. That's actually what we want here. So I've inserted it. I'll go to Properties and I'll call this Agent Name. Change the color. And I'll use that same style, Form Entry. 
And down here is where you create the items that you want to appear in the drop down list. By default, choose an item appears as the first item in the drop down list, but you don't need to keep that there. If I select it, I can just remove it, click on add and type in my first name. Click on OK and then repeat for the next name. And I'll keep going. Click on OK and you'll see now that you have your drop down list. I also want to control for the date. I click in that cell where I want the control to appear and I'm going to go to the date picker control. Go to properties. Give it a title. Change the color. Use the same font. And then I have to choose how I want the date to appear in the form. Well, I go for this format here, click on OK, and then I can select a date and it appears in the form. A little bit further down in my form, I want two checkboxes, one for yes, one for no. Is the contact a budget holder? So first cell I want a checkbox in is here. Develop a tab, checkbox button, properties. I won't bother with the title for this, but I can change the color, use the same font. And then if I want to, I can change the appearance of the checked symbol and the unchecked symbol. So let's do it for the checked symbol first of all. Click on change. And then what you want to do is change the font to wingdings. And wingdings, if I scroll down, gives you a little checked tick box there and an empty tick box up there. So I'm going to select this ticked box here for my checked symbol property. And for my unchecked symbol property, I'm going to choose this empty checkbox. Might just increase the font size of that. And then I can do the same thing for no. And you can see the recently used symbols down here. So now I can click in those little boxes and it will display a tick or it will display without a tick. The next control type I want to show you how to use is the picture control type. Now I actually have a control in there already. I'll get rid of that. Go to the developer tab and here is the picture content control. And all I have to do is click here and select a picture. The final section of the form is where I'm going to create a log of the meetings that I've had with this new client. In this first cell here, I'll want a date picker. I'll choose this short date format. And I want the same thing over in this cell, date of next meeting. In this cell, I want a rich text content control. Meeting notes. Now just to show you the difference between the plain text control and the rich text is with the rich text, I can type some text in, but I can format individual parts of that text. So for example, I could change the color of the word text. I can also insert something like a table. Format it. And I can't do that with the plain text content control. I'll delete that table and that text, but leave the control in there. Now I want the end user to be able to add new rows to this table as and when new meetings occur. And the way to do that is to select that row that you're going to want to repeat. Go to the developer tab on your ribbon 
and then click on this control, repeating section content control. I then need to select that content control. And you can see I've got two content controls here. The orange one is the date one, but the one to the left of it is the repeating section control. So I go to properties, title, new meeting. I'm going to change the color using the same style and then just click on OK. And now you get this little plus button bottom right of the table. If the user clicks on it, they'll get a new row with the relevant controls already placed in it. So they can select a date here, write some notes and select a date over here. One more type of content control I want to show you how to use, and that's this building block gallery content control. Now, as you saw in my little introduction, I had a drop down menu of paragraphs that I could use in this section of the form. To use this content control, you are going to need to create some auto text entries in Microsoft Word. So let's see how we can do this. In this document, I have the three paragraphs that I'm going to use in my form. I'm going to select the first paragraph and I can do that by just triple clicking in the paragraph. And I go to the insert tab on my ribbon and the text group, I go to quick parts and then save selection to quick part gallery. I'm going to call this note one and I'm going to save it in auto text category. I'm going to create a new category called Form Notes and then click on OK. And I'm going to do the same here. Quick Parts, Save Selection to Quick Part Gallery, Note 2, save it as Auto Text, Category Form Notes, click on OK, and the same here. Note three, save to auto text, category form notes. Right, let's get back to our form. So I'm gonna insert my building block gallery content control. Go to properties, I'm gonna call this notes. Change the color, change the font. Now down here, this is where you choose which quick parts you want to display in this content control. So we created auto text entries and the category we created was called form notes. Click on OK. You can now see that you can insert your notes into your form. Now what you'll notice is that it completely ignores the form entry style that's being used elsewhere in the form despite the fact that I have applied that style to this control. Now I want to show you how to avoid this problem. Let's go back to the document that contains our note entries. Now previously what I told you to do was to select the whole paragraph by triple clicking in it. But that actually selects more than we want to select within this paragraph. Let me show you what I mean. I'm on the home tab of my ribbon and I'm going to click on this show hide button and that shows non-printing characters and the one we're interested in is this carriage return. We don't want to select that carriage return when we create the auto text entry. Now the way around this is to click after the full stop at the end of the paragraph and then use the shortcut key combination control shift up arrow key. That selects the paragraph without the paragraph marker. We'll then create a auto text entry. We'll call this part four. Save it to auto text. Form notes, click on OK. Let's go back to our form. Now, if I select note four, you can see that it does apply the correct formatting. A bit fiddly, but that's the way around it. Now I'm just going to clear all the entries in this form and then I'm going to show you how to set it up for distribution. 
Okay, my form is empty and ready to go. So before you distribute it to users, you want to restrict editing to the content controls. So no one can edit any other part of your form. Now to do that, go to the developer tab on your ribbon, click on the restrict editing button. That'll open up this task pane on the right of your screen. In part two, where it says editing restrictions, you want to tick allow only this type of editing in the document. And then from this drop down, choose filling in forms. Then you can start the enforcement by clicking on this button here. Yes, start enforcing protection. Put in a password. Click on OK. And now you'll find that you cannot edit any part of the form except the controls. So if I go up to the date picker and choose a date, I can then tab to the next control. Tab again to the next control. And so on and so forth. The only thing that doesn't work, and this is a bit disappointing, is the building block control. This won't work if the form is protected. So that might be a deal breaker in terms of you using that particular type of control, but all the other controls will work fine. If you ever need to stop protecting a form, you've got a little stop protection button in this same task pane where we applied the protection in the first place. You have to put in your password to stop the protection. Now there's a few other properties that I want to cover before we finish this video. Let's pick this property here, go to the properties button. Something we haven't covered is this option here, remove content control when contents are edited. So if I have that ticked, click on okay. If I change the name here, you can see that the control actually disappears. Let's pick this control. I go to properties here, content control cannot be deleted. So let's see what happens if that's not ticked. Now I'm going to enforce protection. This time I won't put in a password, but can I delete that control? So I've got it selected and I can't delete it. So deletion is only available when I stop protection. Let's see if I can delete it now. Yes, I can. But if I have that property ticked, even though I've not enforced protection on my form, I cannot delete that control. So there is a level of protection that you can apply even if you don't enforce protection over here. The other property I want to look at is contents cannot be edited. Now you wouldn't really want to use that for the type of controls we've created so far. But for example, you could create a control that's a heading within your form. I've deleted date there, but I'm going to insert a plain text content control. And in there, I'm going to write that heading date. Then I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to say contents cannot be edited and in fact deleted. Click on OK. So now I've not enforced protection, but I cannot delete that control. One last thing and we're done. Go to properties, show as. So by default it's bounding box. If I change this option to start in tag and click on OK, you can see a difference in the way that the content controls title appears within the form. So by default it was bounding box. So it appears like this. You also have that option for start and tag. Okay, we've reached the end of this video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next video.